People of God, how y'all doing? You doing all right? Good, 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 y'all. I am here. I, I was having a meeting with the moderators. Uh, we, are, we, we, we went a little late in our meeting. <laughs> we, it's, it's over now. All right, y'all, this is Women's History Month, and it is a great month to be a woman. And uh, it's also a very sensitive month because a lot of times what you're going to hear are people, men and specifically, specifically, are going to tell women what they need to do, what they shouldn't do, what they can do, what they can't do, stand up, sit down, shut up, lay down, <laughs> all these things. And, uh, yeah, and so it's not that we should be respecting women just for the month of March, but we should always respect them. Uh, the problem is that, yes, some women are, are very sensitive, extremely sensitive when you speak negatively against ab about them. And uh, some of that is justified by some of the things that men do say and do. I will agree with that. Let's talk about this in about 60. Report live, seven days a week, always on time, but this time is not free. So watch the Jones, always on sleek, latest trending topics, how you jumping out your seat. Controversial subject, others can't touch it. Community full of people going rocks from the bunk. Guns of politics, finance, music and religion. Stirring up your poverty, bring healing to the village. Son named Walter, daughter named Rebecca. Grew up on the south side, he know do it better. So watch the Jones from the Tribeca. He got something to say, put your hands together. Hello, everybody. So Water, So Water Jones Show. I'm here. It is the uh, Midday Connection. Or sometimes we call it the Midday Correction. <laughs> Baby. Come on in. The water's fine. Water's fine. Uh, Y'all doing all right? Good. Listen, this is a song uh, that I saw. When I was, it was 1979-ish around there, and cassette tapes. My mother, the bunkers heard this story before. There was a box uh, from Columbia Records and Tapes or whatever the name of that company, and you would be able to order cassette tapes through the mail. That's way before Netflix through the mail stuff, and you were part of a club. And it was a card there, and you decided your pick of the month, and then you would send your check. That's when we were sending checks and money orders through the mail, you all. Uh, and the box would come, and there was a lot of cassette tapes in there. And I saw the box in my, on my mother's bedroom, uh, bed, on the bed, uh, and I discovered America. I discovered some of the greatest music I had ever heard. I, had, I, I remember hearing some of these songs on the radio through the 60s and 70s, but then I had it in my home that I can play them at any time that I wanted to. And one of the songs, one of the artists was Helen Reddy. Helen Reddy. Now, this is one of the original cassette tapes, by the way. Um, I maybe have maybe two or three left. The rest of them are gone. But Helen Reddy, and I put that thing in my cassette tape, and I played it, and boy, was my life changed. <laughs> I fell in love with this sound called pop and soft rock. Um, that's basically all that was in there. My, my parents were... My father was a deacon and my mother was saved, but they introduced us to great music that was secular. They were married. They had every right. I'm sure they didn't put Mahalia Jackson in the cassette tape while the time of heavy petting was going on. <laughs> TMI. All right. And this song came on and I was like, man, I, it would be nice to be a woman during this time. <laughs> I am woman, hear me roar in numbers too big to ignore, and I know too much to go back and pretend, because I've heard it all before, and I've been down there on the floor, and no one ever was going to keep me down again. It was just a beautiful melody. Yes, I'm wise, but it's wisdom born of pain. Yes, I've paid the price, but look how much I've gained. If I had to, I can do anything. I'm strong. Strong. I'm invincible. Invincible. She says, I'm woman. Then she says, you can bend but never break me because it only serves to make me more determined to achieve my final goal. 
And I come back even stronger, not a novice any longer, because you've uh, deepened the convictions in my soul. And she goes back to the course. Yes, I'm wise, but is wisdom born of pain? And she says, I'm woman, watch me grow. See me standing toe to toe as I spread my loving arms across the land, but I'm still a little embryo. <laughs> That line always got me when I heard it. I never knew what she said then. But that's what she said here. But I'm still a little embryo with such a long, long way to go until I make my brother understand. Man, that's some deep stuff right there. Wise, uh, but it's wisdom born of pain. It goes on. Invincible, strong woman, invincible, strong. Okay, y'all get the, the whole thing. So I'm looking in the um, Wikipedia. <clears throat> And uh, um, I was looking at some of the historicity of this, and it was, I didn't know she was Australian. Australian. Australian musician Helen Reddy and Ray Burton. Didn't know that. Uh, the first rec uh, recording appeared on her debut album, I Don't Know. And then she sings this song, I don't know how to love you. Da, 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 da. I was wrong. Ah, oh, such a pretty, 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 pretty song. But it is a, a juxtaposed to I am woman. <laughs> Hear me roar to I don't know how to love you. <laughs> I mean, it was something else. And that uh, was heard during the closing credits in the, the 72 film Stand Up and Be Counted. All right, it goes on and you can hear some of the um, thingy, thingy, thingies here. But it had everything to do with the countercultural era, right? And what is that? I think I've got it here, the counterculture. What is that? That is the 1960s, the anti-establishment culture phenomenon and the political movement that developed in the Western world uh, during the 20th century. So this song really was about the anti-establishment counterculture. It really was against the man who was pushing who? It was pushing the white woman to a place. You see, the white woman had a problem with her white husband. And they began to march in the streets and they began to pull off their bras and burn them. And they started the liberation women's lib movement and black women joined white women's fight against her white husband. It was never for the black woman. <laughs> The white woman wanted to be liberated. The black women, they were happy with their husbands at home. The men, black fathers were at home. During the 40s and the 50s and the 60s and even in the 70s, a lot of them were, although they were being removed by the time we get to the 70s, but my father stayed home. Okay? It uh, is often synonymous with the cultural liberation and of the various social changes of the decade. The effects of the movement have been ongoing to the present day. It goes on and on. Okay, you can read that on your own. Um, if this song, I Am Woman, was rewritten today, it would have more feminism lyrics, feministic lyrics, more masculine lyrics, you know, more dominating uh Unif, unif, what what you call it? Unicornish, <laughs> uh, more gender neutral lyrics. Mm -hmm. Yes, Eric Jewel Hayes, they did. White women have benefited from the results of survivors more than any minority. This is true. And um, affirmative action really, really benefited them. Uh, so, as I continue to do my research here, I want to bring up another song, uh, which is uh, another woman's song by Peggy Lee. Okay? Peggy Lee got a song called I'm a Woman. All right? Let me see if I can find it. Okay. Is this it here? So that you can see. Yeah, here it is. This is Peggy Lee's song. I'm a woman. I can wash out 40. Now listen to the lyrics to this because then you 
then you will understand when was this song written and what era was it all right because i'm going to i'm going to play a video that speaks to the subject matter today about getting back into the kitchen all right um she says i can wash out 44 pairs of socks and have them on the line i can starch and iron two dozen shirts for you can count from one to nine and she says she says it really fast i don't know how she did it i was a peggy lee fan i mean i love the music i can slip up a great big dip of lard from a dripping now y'all know this is dated right <laughs> from a dripping can throw it in the skillet do my shopping be back before it melts in the pan my shopping mm. Cause I'm a woman, woman. I'll I'll say it again. I can rub and scrub. You'll never see this in lyrics today. Not from a female. Till this house shining like a dime. Feed the baby, grease the car, powder my face at the same time. Get all dressed up. Get out. Swing till four a.m. and then lay down at five. Jump up at six and start all over again. If you come to me sickly, you know I'm going to make you well. If you come to me all hexed up, you know I'll break the spell. If you come to me hungry, you know I'm going to fill you full of grits. If it's loving you like, I'll kiss you and give you the shivering fits. I got $20 gold piece says there's ain't nothing I can't do. I can make a dress out of a feed bag. Wow. And I can make a man. out of Wow. She said, I got a $20 gold piece. Who gave her that gold piece? <laughs> this, some, this some stuff right here. Let's see if I can find what, if Wikipedia says anything about it. All right. Now, my question to you all is, Number one, did a woman or a man write this song? Huh? Hmm. Did a woman or a man write this song for Peggy? Hmm. Anybody? I'd like to know. Carolyn says, man. Ann says, man. <laughs> April says, probably a man. <laughs> Gwen says, man. 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 Let's see. The song, I'm a Woman, was written by famed duo, songwriter duo, Jerry Lieber and Mike Stoller. And was recorded in 1962 by Christine Kittrell. Okay. Maybe Jerry is a woman. Can y'all check it out? Because you know that's a unisexual name. <laughs> Typically, women were not even allowed to write songs. And mostly it was the men that wrote these songs. Mm -hmm. And did uh, has things changed? The way have men rethought? You know, have men really rethought how they wrote songs back then and how they treat women today? How they rethought it and how they... Because when you look in Congress, you'll see something very familiar. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play the song in the commercial form as they are selling a... A perfume. You all may remember this commercial, but notice how the lyrics change because it's not during that era anymore. It has been updated. Let's go. I can put the wash on the fly, feed the kids, get dressed, pass out the kisses, and get to work by five and nine. Cause I'm a woman. Ajoli. Give her Ajoli. The eight-hour perfume for the 24-hour woman. I can bring home the bacon, fry it up in a pan, and never, never, never let you forget your romance, cause I'm a woman. 
Jolie, the eight-hour perfume for your 24-hour woman. Yeah, I remember Al Jolie. It lasted eight hours. It's it's it smelled like. <laughs> <laughs> they made they tried to make it expensive French perfume by calling it Anjali. Oh, I smelt it. And I had to take a shower after I smelled it. <laughs> I take a shower, I mean. <laughs> that thing smelled like you took some Kool-Aid and put it in <laughs> You put it in a cool uh, you wouldn't say, hey Kool-Aid. You took a little package of Kool-Aid and put it in. <laughs> um so yeah, notice how the lyrics changed. She's not just um, shopping and cooking. Notice she had a suit on. She went to work, and now she brings home the bacon. Mmm, interesting. What a switch! What a what a twist! Now. I want to go to the readout, Joy Reid. I want to listen to what she has to say about the Republican response by a Miss uh, Congresswoman Britt. Is that her name? And I want to see how MSNBC spins this. Now, this is about six minutes long. We're going to react to it and see if she sees something here because it's difficult to listen, watch liberal media. Um, it's even even more difficult to watch uh, conservative media. But well, boy, it's, it's difficult to watch them both. But liberal media is difficult as a Christian. It's difficult to watch it. But but they have a there is an agenda here because the conservative in in media is pushing women back into the house to take care of the babies and and stay in the kitchen barefoot and pregnant. The problem is there's no balance. A lot of them do want them to get back into the kitchen and, st and stay out of commerce because of the fear of the woman is taking over and they are, they're becoming too powerful. The men are losing out. This is why we have what's called the red pill where men are coming together to cry on each other's shoulder because women are being becoming too powerful. You will never see me crying with men in a room about how powerful women are. <laughs> Which means, what are you doing, man? Huh? Brother, man, what are you doing <laughs> that you're so afraid that women are getting ready to take over the world? Who run the world? Women's. Who won the world? Is that what she said? It's sad. Bunch of men. <laughs> I wanted that job, and that girl got that job, and the women to take it over. <laughs> Bunch of man be pamsy. <laughs> All right. All right, let's see what Joy got to say. Iconic photo. It is the integration of Central High School. All right, will it, will it? Oh, here we go. High School in Little Rock, Arkansas, on September 4th, 1957. The young woman screaming with that twisted, hateful look on her face is Hazel Bryan, who was Okay, Little Rock, Arkansas. I remember that. Uh, my mother lived up the street from Central High School. My grandmother didn't let her go to Central High School, but this was happening while my mother was uh, in, uh, let's see. Uh, no, my mother, I don't think my mother got to high school just yet when this happened, but they did live up the street. Student at Little Rock High at the time and an anti-integration activist. The student being screamed at is Elizabeth Eckford, one of the Little Rock Nine who integrated the school under the protection of the National Guard. Well, here's a fun fact that anti-racism anti educator Tim Wise pointed out on his ex-Twitter account. This is a promo pic for the TV show Leave it to Beaver, a much beloved program, especially for white conservatives who view it as a nostalgic representation of family life and the ultimate example of a more innocent time. Yes, I agree with that. Okay, I'm watching this in real time with you all. Yes, leave it to Beaver. My mother was hooked to it, on it. I saw it every day in, in our home. Um, and you all know my story that my name is actual was uh, Ward, W-A-R-D. Because my mother was so in love with that show, she was in love. Black women were in love with these men on the TV who came home from work with a briefcase. He opened the door and there was his wife 
in a beautiful dress, pearls. Sometimes she had an apron on. The dog met him at the door. The, the mama met him at the door. She kissed him. She gave, she, he sat on a chair. She gave him his newspaper and maybe a pipe. The dog sat next to him, uh, and she was in the kitchen getting ready to bring his supper out. That was the life that we saw coming up. So my mother named me Ward after Ward Cleaver, the father. And it's still on my long form birth certificate. Um, and there's a line going through it because my grandmother, Madea, said, can't no black boy be raised in the 60s uh, with a white man's name, Ward. <laughs> so she changed it to Walter because that was her, her brother's name was Walter. And those of you who know my history, I end up doing everything that my un great uncle did in life other than going to the military, everything else he, he did. He was a chaplain. He was a musician. He was a songwriter. He was, he was everything that I became. So the Lord did that for, for me through my grandmother. So yeah, let's go. But here's the thing. Leave it to Beaver premiered on October 4th, 1957, one month to the day after that photo from Little Rock was taken. America was not innocent. And the evil wasn't only in the heart of Hazel Bryan or other Little Rock whites, it was a national sickness, one most whites ignored. CBS aired Leave It to Beaver about a quote unquote typical American family and the mishaps of their youngest son Theodore, AKA the Beaver, as his older brother Wally and his typical suburban parents, Ward and June Cleaver, try to get him out of scrapes. And it debuted during a time of tremendous racial and gender upheaval in America. World War I and especially World War II had put a fire under millions of black Americans as black men came home from serving in Europe with newfound urgency to secure their rights here. The Korean War followed in 1950, prolonging the workforce disruption that had pushed many white women out of the kitchen and into jobs mm -hmm. to replace their war fighting husbands. Yes. Meanwhile, the Rosie the Riveter, this is why I have uh, the thumbnail with Rosie. Notice her color scheme is a little darker to, on the thumbnail, <laughs> but that's exactly what happened. Now, I don't know if she's going to say it, but then the men came home from fighting in the war and many of those women had to leave those jobs and go back into the kitchen. Uh, the problem was all of them didn't go back to the kitchen. That's not the problem. But to, for those men during that time, a lot of those women had uh, didn't want to go back in the kitchen. They stayed into the workforce. And it's good that they did. All right. Civil rights movement was winning epic court battles, culminating in Brown versus the Board of Education in 1954, which ordered the integration of American schools, meaning white families faced the prospect of their kids going to school with black children, and many weren't happy about it. Hence the images of white moms and students screaming at black students as they entered all white schools. For after this, this, this is good, good history. I've done a show on this. I remember this um, right, right even after the Civil Rights Bill was signed. That's true. A lot of white evangelicals began to pull their children out of public schools, and then they set up their universities and colleges and private schools and high schools in the South, and you were not allowed to en enroll a black kid. So Central High School in um, Little Rock is a perfect example of this. The, the busing, um, Kamala Harris, remember, rebuked Biden when they was running against each other. And she mentioned the busing, how she was bussed and you blah, blah, blah. Remember that, y'all? That gripping scene. <laughs> All right. And so some of you are of the age where you were forced to be bussed uh, into a school that, you know, um, so this is some gripping history here that she is bringing up, and I wish more young people would, um, would, would pay attention to it so they can understand the history behind why the schools are so segregated still today in places like uh, Alabama, Mississippi, um, and um, other parts of the South. It's still very much segregated. Even in the, south, in the North here in uh, Chicago, is, I think is the most segregated city in the entire country. Florida, Ma white. A major city, that is. I mean, the disruptions were stark. They watched their housemates refuse to board the buses and come to work in Alabama for a whole year in 1955. 
black women were often leaving domestic service altogether to also take industrial jobs during the wars or insisting on registering to vote. Many middle-class white women, meanwhile, particularly those who had gotten jobs during the war, found that they weren't exactly eager to go back to packing lunches and cleaning up after their husbands. Yes. So the fight was on to make them go back. Ah, and give she's bringing it up. Thank you, Joy. I don't always agree with Joy, but she is right. I knew this was to be true, and it's good to have some, some backing up with a, a, a network. All right, so going back to the schools, the uh, uh, it was Richard Nixon who rebuked the white evangelicals because they were taking— he threatened to take away their tax shelter as a, as non for, non for profits. The churches were setting up these schools and they didn't have to pay taxes. But then Nixon said, if you don't integrate these schools, then um, you're going to have to pay taxes. And then that's how a lot of this busting up and the desegregation stuff started happening because the government got involved in, in, in this um, man. And then here comes the affirmative, affirmative action. And so, this history right here is, is quite gripping, and it is the reason why we are still having the problems that we're having today. So she's bringing up here, what does she say? Back the independence, that earning their own money rather yes. than relying on another. Yes, so they did not want to go back to the kitchens. Uh, so they, they fought against that, and then the, the men forced these women to leave the Rosie the Riveter outfit and put back on the skirt. Allowance had produced. Post-war Hollywood enlisted itself in the project of reasserting normalcy yeah. in American society. TV shows portrayed happy housewives completely fulfilled by the task of keeping Little Beaver out of trouble and making sure Ward had his dinner on time. Man, you're talking. Reed, Reed you're talking. I know y'all like, why you keep stopping? Because it's the So Walter Jones show, not the Reed show. <laughs> okay, this is a perfect example. They employed Hollywood to do their bidding. Even when it came to diamonds, our girl's best friend, the diamonds, and the, you have to, they said, they even put a scale that if I want to, in, um, I want to propose to a woman, I had to present her a diamond and diamonds are worthless. They're everywhere. Unlike gold, diamonds are everywhere. They're worthless. But the De Beers company decided to put this platform together, this campaign together to get men to spend, I think, two or three times their salaries would buy a diamond. All right, so a man got to go into debt to buy a diamond for a woman. I don't even know if she even like her, <laughs> okay? And uh, and so even though the diamonds were not worth anything, what the De Beers Company did, well, they went into Hollywood and insisted that the producers uh, would write into the scripts uh, the way to present diamonds or to propose to women of, of Hollywood. And uh, so that's what you saw in the, in the movies, on your television and media some man getting on his knee prior to Hollywood getting involved. A man would just give her a gift. It could be a, just a cute piece of paper. <laughs> and, and this was a gift. Uh, uh, you know, as he's proposing to her, he gave her a string and gave her something. It wasn't a diamond. Men didn't go broke back, back, back prior to what they call cold pre cold. Um, was a good time for men. They didn't have to spend all this money for diamonds. All right. Y'all tired of me? Yeah, yes, you are. <laughs> the folks at the Museum of Food and Culture write, quote, marketing efforts of the 1950s sold the idea of a happy housewife as one that is efficient, spends money wisely, makes food from scratch, always keeps the house clean, and make it all look effortless. Oh, and does all of this while looking gorgeous. And the promotion of this pristine domestic image and women who were fulfilled as housewives was pushed from all angles. Women's magazines featuring household products, mm -hmm. the process of employment, the Mrs. Degree, the MRS, they called it, banking rules, assumptions and judgments, television shows. Yes, like that's right. That's right. My mother couldn't get a bank account unless my father was at was there at the uh, at the bank. I remember that. I remember hearing about women could not they couldn't buy a home, couldn't get a bank account, couldn't get a lot of things. Unless the father was home, and the only only thing that on the only um, exception when it came to the man not needing to be there is when the salesman rang the bell or called and wanted to sell you a vacuum cleaner, and then he, if the father or the husband answered the phone, 
What did the salesman say next? Hmm. Can y'all tell me? That's right. Credit cards, too. Can y'all tell me? What was the next question that the salesman asked when he knocked on the door to sell uh, a anything, a vacuum cleaner or Tupperware? Mm-hmm. You got it. Is there a woman in the house? <laughs> Ask me how I know. I remember getting those calls. When we were allowed to answer the phone, I remember a man was getting ready to sell a knife. He wanted to sell something. He asked, is there a woman in the house? I, okay. Is your, he didn't answer my father. He says, where's, where's your mom? <laughs> where's your mom? Why? Can y'all tell me why did the salesman ask about the woman? Hmm. Can y'all tell me why did, why, did this, why did the salesman ask, is there a woman? Is there a female? Is there a wife in the house? Anybody? Hmm? Hurry up, y'all. I got to end this show. <laughs> Hurry up. Hmm? I don't know. My daddy gave my mama the money. <laughs> Okay, anybody? She, all right. She was domesticated. Vesta said, easy to manipulate. Yes, men don't buy. (laughs) That's right. That's right. She kept the house. Yep. She did the cleaning, gullible. Yep. Commending vacuum. Come on, Carolyn Wagner. Hey, girl. (laughs) Yep. Women cleaned the house. And she was uh, she was easily to be manipulated. Somebody said that. All right, let's go. Because she was an emotional shopper. Right. Not in all cases, but he was hoping that this house had an emotional person in there. But to Beaver, the Donna Reed show, Ozzie and Harriet and more. But change was coming, whether the men of Hollywood, Madison Avenue and Main Street liked it or not. All the Tupperware parties, kitchen gadget, and girdle commercials in the world weren't going to stop women who wanted their own money, meaningful work, or access to birth control, which came via a Supreme Court decision in 1972, the right to abortion, which came via Roe v. Wade in 1973, and women's right to open a bank account without a man's signature, Ah. which women couldn't do. Ah. Man, Joy, you know, I, I typically, again, I typically disagree with Joy because she's too liberal and it, 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 it's, it's, it's too much. It's just too much. <laughs> it's too much. You're allowing all this stuff. It's going to backfire. It is already backfired. All that liberality is already backfired. But she's giving some history here. And I, didn't I not just say that? This is good when you watch this stuff live and you, and you stop it and you say something intelligent. <laughs> and then the, and the person that you're watching live repeat it. I thought I was. I thought I was the dumbest person. Right, Until 1974. 1974. So I'm right. Yes. Because I re- again, I don't, I remember. I, I Again, when I was born, as soon as I came out of my mother's womb, I was already 10 years old. <laughs> they, 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 people always thought I was, I was 10, 15 years older than, than what, to when, whatever age I was at that moment. Something I didn't mention at the top. Leave it to Beaver, that emblematic archetype of the 1950s, actually wasn't a hit at the time. It never cracked the top 30 TV programs throughout its initial TV run and only became popular as a cult classic rerun in the 1980s when it was more of a parody of the 1950s than an aspirational show. The top shows in the actual 1950s included the George Burns and Gracie Allen show. Love it. Which showed a married couple. Okay, George Burns and Gracie Allen. So somebody asked yesterday, I think it was Dion. I don't know if Dion is here. He asked, uh, Rogers would always say, good night, Gracie. Don't worry, she'll do it after this show. Good night, Gracie. Dion asked, <laughs> Kamitra says, I was one year. <laughs> Dion asked, what is Gracie? Why do you always say Gracie? Dion evidently is a young man. <laughs> he evidently is a young man because this is what he would say to his wife after every show. They would stand on the balcony or were they on the balcony or, or, or somewhere on stage? And, and then she would say something really crazy and dumb. <laughs> and then he would say, good night, Gracie. That's what it comes from you all. 
All right. And if you go to our private Zoom sessions, at the end of our session, we're saying goodbye. You also hear people saying, Good night, John boy. <laughs> Good night, John girl. Good night, blah, blah, blah. Good night, Gracie. So the bunkers are typically from middle age up. We have bunkers that are in their 80s. What a blessing uh, to have the seasoned saints in this community. All right, monkey move. Now you get it because I know you're young. <laughs> he just got it. <laughs> he just got it. Yep. Good night, Gracie. There it is. All right, here we go who were bickery equals, and I Love Lucy, which portrayed another real-life marriage between a feisty comedian, Lucille Ball, and a Latino actor named Desi Arnaz. These shows were indeed about housewives, but disruptive, disruptive. rather than blissful ones. Disruptive housewives, yes. And watch, rinse, and repeat. History repeats itself because remember the Roseanne Barr show? Roseanne show? Remember that? She was a disruptive, negative vulgar housewife that we were not used to. She was not submissive. She just was, we wanted a um, Dr. Huxtable, but even Dr. Huxtable um, changed the norm because when we would see a, a black woman in television, she was typically more subservient um, uh or she was single and she had a baby like Julia. All right. And then when these, the sitcoms would come on a scene, like that's my mama. She was a Madea type person, always beating. And, you know, again, where's the, where's the father? They would write these movies where these shows where no black father was in the home. Then we, when we finally got a black father in the home, they were living in the projects. Good times. And then you saw this subservient housewife, Evans. But then they uh, introduced the Jeffersons and they finally brought him up into a, a place, a deluxe apartment in the sky, <laughs> moved to the east side. Uh, but um, what's her name? Miss Evans. What's her name? Uh, Wheezy. Wheezy uh, was not, she was, she was not like uh, Dr. Huxtable, nor was she like Evans. She was different. She didn't, she talked back to George and she, and they were, George was, was more of a bumbling idiot in a sense. All right. So these, they, when they wrote for blacks, even though they had, they made, they had some money, there still was some ghettoish about themselves, right? The changes in what women expected from the world, it turns out, were irreversible. But getting women back under control, particularly white women, has been the project of the dominant economic class since the 1950s. And it accelerated during the 1970s, when an impressive woman named Phyllis Schlafly led the conservative cause of convincing women that what they really wanted wasn't freedom, independence, or feminism, or God forbid, an equal rights amendment to the Constitution. No, no. It was good old-fashioned domesticity. Katie Britt is in the Phyllis Schlafly tradition, an Alabama lawyer and United States senator who would have you believe that she's nothing more than a happy housewife, much like Schlafly was an author and powerful public speaker who would have had you believe the same. The goal? To sell women on giving up their hard-won rights and freedoms so that the men can be back in charge. Their vehicle? It's called the trad wife trend. My guests and I will explain what that is after the break. Yeah, the trad wife. Yep. <sighs> wow. That actually was a good piece. But you also heard the agenda. Did y'all hear the agenda in her mouth, in her tone? Did you hear it? Both sides have an agenda. I will agree. Both sides do. Um, the problem is there is no balance in the agenda. I want to read this here about what the scripture says about mothers and staying home. The subject of stay at home moms is one that has caused much controversy, especially in Western nations where many women work outside the home. There really are only two 
uh, direct verses or passages that talk about a mother staying at home with her children. Just two, Titus 2, third to the fifth verse. Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. Then they can train the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind and to be subject to their husbands so that no one will malign the word of God. That's a tough one for today's woman. On both sides, it's tough. The other direct verse is 1 Timothy 5 through 14, which says, So I counsel young widows to marry, to have children, to manage their homes, and to give the enemy no opportunity for slander. Another translation from that phrase is to be busy at home. In the Titus 2 passage is to be keepers at home. And also consider some indirect verses like, like Proverbs 14.1 states that it is wise for a woman to invest in her home. While it is not necessary to be a stay-at-home mom in order to invest in her home, we see the priority that God places on the home and the woman's involvement. Clearly, the home is not to be neglected for the sake of outside employment, not neglected. Deuteronomy 6 and 4 teaches the importance of constantly teaching our children. Of course, this is addressed to fathers as well as mothers. Staying at home with children would only give more opportunity to teach children God's way. Yes, I will say that. So it is a positive investment to be in a child's lives by applying this passage of scripture. Literally the, 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 the problem is not understanding how societies progress. I studied uh, anthropology in, at Moody Bible. And I looked at the different systems of families. And I realized that the Western civilization is blind to how other civilizations employ or, or produce or how they dwell together in peace where the women are out there hustling. Proverbs 31 is a place where I want to dwell now because without Proverbs 31, there would not be much hope for women in the church today because all the men are doing is making women stay at home, be barefoot and pregnant. Uh, and that he is only one income He's the one that's bringing home the bacon. But that all changed over time because the inflationary rate went high and the, and the housing is it's expensive to buy a house extremely. Houses, houses have doubled over since, the, since the bubble. It has doubled. Uh, to buy a car, it has doubled. Everything is doubled in price. And so now the, the, the single provider of the home, the man, is, is gone. Unless that man is making six figures and up, it is difficult for one man to provide for his home. So the woman now has to go out and work. She, it's not that she has to. It's just that it is something that they didn't prepare for, possibly. And not in all cases. They didn't prepare for it. All right. They didn't produce and build their own. And this is what we're getting ready to read in Proverbs 31, it seems like to me that this woman had prepared and her husband and her um, was able to do things together. But this is that system. This is the culture of this Middle Eastern area here, which is different than what we have today. Although what we have today is easier than what they did. They had to work by the sweat of their brows to get what we do when we're sitting at our tables being keyboard soldiers and making money. <laughs> yeah, even uh, with women's suffrage, black women eventually uh, pulled away from the movement. Yes, yes. Though black women are less well remembered, they played an important role in the uh, 15th and 19th Amendment being passed. Come on, William Faiton. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. That's good history right there. 
Uh, I worked for 10 years and God blessed me with a wonderful husband. And now we both are retired. Now look that world so confused about the Bible. Yes. Okay. Now let's look at, let's look what Proverbs say here. Because you got to read what it said before. This is an acrostic poem. Okay. Which is where you get the Hebrew alphabets from the top on down. It's, it is, um, it is, uh, the alphabet would start here, a lev, and then at the bottom it would say tav. So that would be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, all the way down. So that would be saying A all the way down to Z. That is an acrostic poem, and it's like an acronym, okay? So that's what's happening here. You just can't read it as an acrostic poem because it is written in our Bibles in English, and you'd have to read it in Hebrew to understand the poetic form. You got to go to um, patreon.com, the Sir Walter Jones Show, and I teach a lesson on poetry and how it's formed. Oh, my son, oh, son of my womb, oh, son of my bowels, do not waste your strength on women, on those who ruin kings. <laughs> we never read this part right here. The sayings of King Lemuel contain this message, which his mother taught him. We often thought that this was a man doing all the talking, but his mother taught him this. And he just was passing it on to us. Mm -hmm. It is not for kings uh, to guzzle wine. Rulers should not crave alcohol, for if they drink, they may forget the law and not give justice uh, to the oppressed. Alcohol is for the dying and wine for the, the bitter distress. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their troubles no more. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves and ensure justice for those being crushed. Yet speak up for the poor, helpless, and see that they get. See, only a woman, man, could give those wise words. Ooh, and he took it and he ran with it. So he says, who can find a virtuous woman or a capable wife? She's more precious than rubies, her husband, right here. Pay close attention to when he pops up. Her husband, what? Trust her. She will be greatly enriched. She has, uh, she will greatly enrich whose life? His. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. Y'all see what's happening here? <laughs> uh, maybe y'all missed this. I know y'all reading in another translation. Mm -hmm. Then it says, she finds wool and flax, busily spins it, She's like a merchant sh ship bringing her food from afar. Look at that. So she is an importer. Sh she could possibly be an exporter too, because if she's making stuff, she is ex exporting it. She gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast for her household. She has a red eye <laughs> and plans the day work for her servants, girls. She is a businesswoman and she employs. Mm -hmm. She's an employer. She goes to inspect the field and what buys it. She might be flipping it. She's into real estate. With her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She is energetic and strong, a hard worker. She makes sure her dealings is, are profitable. She's a businesswoman. Her lamps burn late into the night. She works all night. She's a night owl. Mm, mm, mm. This, is, this is a bad girl. Her hands are busy spinning thread. Her fingers twisted piper. She extends the, uh, she is, um, what's the word you are? when you give to the poor and opens her arms to the needy. She has no fear of the winter for her household, for everyone has warm clothes. She sews. She's a seamstress. She's a seamstress. She's benevolent. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a word I'm looking for, Mary. Um, 
what's the word? Charity, yes, generous, yes, but there's another word. She's a philanthropist is what I'm looking for. Um, she makes her own bed spreads. She dresses in fine linen and what? Purple. Purple. Whenever you see purple in the Bible, guess what, y'all? That's money. Lydia was a woman of purple. Money. Um, her husband is well known at the city gates where he sits with the what? He is a community leader, leader or he could be a politician. Uh, he's a businessman. He, he could be the CEO. He's on some board of trustees. All right. So her husband is well known. Guess how he's well known, though. She makes belted linen garments and sashes to sell to the merchants. Guess how she's well known. He is well known. Take a wild hint. She is clothed with the strength with uh, strength. Now, this is uh, poetry, by the way. Again, go to Patreon and we talk about poetry um, and we look at um, metaphors and personal. Anyway, she is clothed with strength and dignity and she laughs without fear of the future. Um, so this, 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 this is symbolisms here, you all. Okay. When she speaks, her words are wise and, and she gives instructions with kindness. She carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from Look at that. She's frugal. She watches. She can match. She, she, she micromanages. <laughs> she takes inventory. She doesn't waste in spending. She is a good book keeper okay she's an accountant y'all get it now and she suffers suffers nothing from what laziness she considered the ways of the ant thou sluggard uh -huh. come on Joyce turn you right her children stand and bless her her husband praises her look at that they keep coming back to him he prays her there are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. Charm and deceptive and beauty does not last. You people who put on filters. <laughs> <laughs> and put your profile pic on uh, date.com or black planet. <laughs> Charm and deception and beauty does not last. Superflu superfluid, superficial. But a woman who fears the Lord, all right, will be greatly praised. So why does her husband praise her? Because she fears the Lord. Reward her for all she has done. Let her deeds publicly declare her praise. So I ask y'all, why is her husband well known for this reason right here? Y'all understand? So I do not think that all women need to go back to the kitchen exclusively. I think everybody need to be in the kitchen. I was in the kitchen more than my wife. My wife was out there hustling. She was working for the bank. I did the cooking. I raised my children on my cooking. You understand? So it makes no sense to push all women in the kitchen and the man is at home. What is he doing? All right. So I was not so much a stay at home father, although I was, but it's just that I, um, I was in the music ministry and industry. And so my, I, I did piano lessons and vocal training and coaching and what have you. So they came to our home. So that's how I made our money. I worked from home. She went out there and worked a nine to five. Y'all get it. So while I was at home, I did the domestic stuff 
I cooked, I cleaned, I, I, I picked up the kids from took them to school and picked them up and brought them home, took them to the park and what have you. That was my role. It works, you all. It depends on the couple and what they want to do. Mm -hmm. What they want to do. I do not believe in a man staying at home and not bringing anything to the, the plate because there's a man who stay at home and, the, and he expect her to come off her job, come home from her job and go in the kitchen and cook. He's a fool. He is a fool because some men look at cooking as it, it demeans them. It, it, it takes away their kahunas because they have to cook for their wives who work. You understand? It's ridiculous. So the Republicans put this woman into, in the kitchen and she lowered her, softened her voice into a whisper. And I will say it was pretty bad. It scared a whole bunch. It scared all of America. And then she brought in uh, this thing about the border and this, this Mexican. Um, she spin this thing. The, and the Republicans went after whoever put her up. It was uh, Mitch McConnell. I thought it was Johnson, but I think it was Mitch McConnell who invited her there. And they thought, so what she did was a representation of the of the Republican men. This is the way they want to see women back in that kitchen. You can empower them, but make sure you go, you, you go back into that kitchen. It was really bad. It didn't represent America. It just represents that, that small portion of America and that small portion of America whom, whom they thought she was representing want to get out of the kitchen. <laughs> it was bad y'all. It was really bad. So there is a well-balancedness in homes. You can be well-balanced, love God and love your husband and wife and raise your children properly. And both roles could do this. They could, they could mesh with, with this. So the woman could go out there and, and, and work. My wife, my ex-wife was, she went to school. So I had to support her through school. All right. Uh, what's her name? The cooker, the cooking show, the, the woman who got the spices, who speaks with, with a wonderful Southern flair who embarrassed um, Wendy Williams on, on, on the show. Now, Wendy, I hope the Lord help you find somebody who will not. <laughs> what's her name? Y'all, I love that woman. I love, I love her. What did she do? She said that she was going to retire her husband. Thank you, Charlene. Tabitha. She says, I'm going to retire my husband. When, when the world, when black women especially heard that, they was like, no, you're not. And Wendy Williams was one of them. It wasn't all black women. It was the Wendy Williams type of women who was burnt by men. And Tabitha Brown says, he supported me when I was trying to build what I, what I was trying to build something and my husband was there to support me. Why can't I turn around and get take him off his job so the roles could switch. It's not that he's going to be sitting at home being lazy. <laughs> and the black women hated that. I loved me some Tammy Brown after that. And I did that show. Roger, didn't I do that show? Put that in the comment section. I did that show. I think I call it when, when, when Tabitha met uh, the other girl, Wendy. When Tabitha met, is that what I called it? I can't remember. Anyway, it was hilarious. <laughs> The clapback was the clapback heard around the world. <laughs> and she loved her husband with an unconditional love that a lot of black women had never seen. And so uh, the audience, some of the audience was split on it. It was like, no, nah, I ain't gonna do that for no, no black man. And then she was showing y'all, that was my mother. That was Mother Moody. That was my dear. How when a woman does that for her man and pay him back like that, Trust me, a good man will make sure she will never, ever have to worry about anything. Y'all like, well, no, she, she don't have to worry about anything because she's making her money, blah, blah, blah. No, it ain't all just about money. It ain't all about money. Look what the, look what the, the man said. Charm and deception and beauty does not last, and, and money, too. They don't last. That money can dry up. But when you got a man who's now giving back to you all that you did for him, uh, to take him, retire him off his job. So now the, 
y'all can put your resources together and help raise those children and build a happy home. That is their agreement. Stay at their house. That's the problem with America. Y'all all up in our houses. <laughs> Let us do what we do. <laughs> okay, as long as it is benefiting the home and the community and we paying our taxes, leave us alone. <laughs> she spanked Wendy gracefully. <laughs> she did. I got to find that, man. Somebody need to find that and send that to me because that thing right there, that thing, that thing, that thing blessed me. Let me find it while I'm on the air. Y'all can go, but I'm going to find it. Let's see. Tabitha Brown uh, response to Wendy Williams. <laughs> it popped up on its own. I got to play it again, y'all. I got to play it again. Let's see. Will it play? Uh, will it play? I see it. I see it doing something here. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Let me start it over. I, I, I got to play it because it's a wonderful way to end the show. Come back up, Tabitha. Oh, man. Hold on. Okay. Let's see if it's going to work. Let me put this in here. I'm sorry, y'all. Oh, man, it's not playing. Okay, there it is. God bless you. There it is, there it is. <laughs> Hello there. Y'all all right? Y'all all right? Very good, honey. I was up doing a little work here. I got my pajamas on in my office. And then my phone started going off, like, praising people. It's like, girl, you're Wendy Williams. Um, first of all, Wendy Williams, honey, God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. Okay. Um... And so people sent me a little clip and I said, oh my God, the pain this woman must be in. When did the pain you must be in to mm. feel this way? And I'm so sorry. But listen, let me tell you this. Um, 23 years I've been with my husband. Yes, uh, broke for a very long time together. Mm. Struggled for a very long time together. Succeeded for the last couple of years together, right? Uh, my husband took a job in agreement with me. He took a job 15 years ago to help support my dream. Mm. And I know you may not know what that looks like Whoa. in a genuine uh, place, right? Um, but this was an agreement that my husband and I had. And I told him 15 years ago, oh, babe, in five years, I'll be able to take you out of there so then you can pursue one of your dreams that you love. Wow. Right now, I was his dog in the fight, okay? And he believed in me. And we did it together mm. for the last 15 years. I did every year with him at LAPD. And he did every year with me with rejection and no's in this entertainment industry, right? However, God has blessed me. <laughs> he has allowed me to manifest. I've been praying on this for a very long time. And it has now come to pass. That is the power of God. It's also the power of allowing God to be first in your marriage, okay? Um, and that is how it remains successful. We keep him first. He is first in our marriage. Not money, not business, not success. There it is. But God, he's See? first. What I tell you. Okay? Um, so this is my prayer for you. Uh, I pray that love finds you. All right, True God. love. I pray it finds you and it holds you tight. I pray that someone will love you enough to see you, to see you when you are not well, to see you when you need true support. To wow, she's being prophetic because look at Wendy right now. She needs somebody to help her. To see you when you need compassion, to see you when you need kindness. I pray that somebody loves you enough to sacrifice their life for you. I pray that type of love binds you so that you can understand why. I don't want my husband to put his life on the line anymore wearing a bulletproof vest if he don't have to. Mm. And if that's not his desire, I love him enough that I want him to be safe and I want him to coach children the way he wants to. My husband has a nonprofit, right? And he wants to be able to build that even more so. Mm. And what I do know is a nine to five or a steady job 
takes away time for creativity. Yeah. It takes away time that you want to pour into your real true purpose. And if God blesses someone to be able to pull out of that mm -hmm. nine to five mm -hmm. and pour everything into their purpose, yes. their passion, ooh, my goodness, why would we dishonor God Woo! if he blesses us with the ability and the way to be able to do so? You better preach, Ooh, honey. Ooh, honey. I'm excited about that. <laughs> ooh, ooh, I honey. pray that somebody finds you, love finds you, that excites you the way I am excited about my husband being able to grow his business, being able to pour into children, continue to coach these kids, do other things he's dreamt about. Ooh, honey, I <laughs> pray this type of excitement and love finds you and anybody else who seems to not understand this. I pray that type of love finds you sacrifice, compassion, like I really do. I really, really do. Okay. Um, with that being said, mm -hmm. uh, I thank all of y'all <laughs> for messaging me and, and telling me about it. And I want you Whoever is watching, Ooh, honey. <laughs> who understands the type of love, let us all pray for people like Miss Wendy um, and others who have either been so hurt uh, or never found a genuine love that fills their heart with so much compassion and joy. Let us all pray that they find that and that it finds them. Yes, very good. Now, I want y'all to Go on about your business, okay? Mm. And have the most amazing day. <laughs> but even if you can't have a good one, don't you dare go messing up nobody else's hand. <laughs> God bless you. I'll talk to y'all later. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Man, I tell you, I fell in love with I fell, I fell in love with that girl right away. <laughs> right away. <laughs> Woo! I never heard of her. I had never heard of a tablet. Never. It wasn't until Wendy said what she said, and it catapulted this girl's career. Ain't that something? What God, what what the devil meant for bad, God meant for good. <clears throat> I still probably would have never heard of Tabitha if it weren't for Wendy Williams. And uh, millions of men out there didn't know who she was. Y'all already knew who she was. The women knew. A lot of us men didn't know. <laughs> Until Tabitha opened up her mouth. And then I was like, who's this Tabitha woman? Y'all were like, y'all don't know her. You don't know Tabitha. I'm like, I don't know. I, I'm not in the kitchen. I don't know. <laughs> but, oh, boy, I'm so glad I discovered this girl. She blessed. She has been blessing us. She will make a great, great counselor, um, missionary, evangelist, <laughs> teacher, preacher. <laughs> yeah, I know she can't be a pastor now. I still got, I still, I still stand strong on that. And I got pastor, you know, female pastors in here right now watching me. They, they know how I feel, but they still follow me because we, we love each other. We just don't agree on that part. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let me, let me go. Midday connection is, is, is getting longer and longer. <laughs> yeah, that girl preached. So... I want us all to pray for Wendy Williams uh, because that ailment that she has is no laughing matter. It's a sad situation. And um, yeah, see, here, see, Carolyn right here. She says, I'm a female pastor. What I tell you? They disagree with me. And, and me and Carolyn Wagner, you know, we used to fight over Donald Trump and the Republican Party. <laughs> <laughs> then we were Carolyn. We used to fight, fight, fight. But I made a pact with Carolyn. I told her I'm backing up from that. I'm not fighting uh, this Trump fight no more. Nope. I will not put no more weird faces of Donald Trump and him in a very embarrassing situation. Nope. Not doing that no more. No. Doing that does what? It uplifts who? <laughs> it brings attention to me. So I don't do it no more. I speak against the, the platform, yes, the, the politics of, of maybe a certain party, but Trump is not my fight and, and no is Biden. 
Biting is not my fight. They both got problems that they're going to have to deal with and seek, seek the Lord on. My fight is the people. You people who are voters, I'm going to talk about y'all, though. <laughs> Carolyn, I'm going to talk about y'all. <laughs> I'm going to talk about y'all, though. Uh, and so, no, I don't, I don't do that no more because what happens is, is when, you, when you talk about men like that, you, I'm basically uh, slapping 40, how many millions of people, 70 million, I think it was, who voted for Donald Trump. That's a lot of people who I'm, I'm basically putting their hero on, on the wall and making, making um, mockery and sport. And it doesn't do anything for the kingdom at all uh, so I'm not going to join fortress with any of that stuff no more we've got to lead people to the Lord we have to do it <clears throat> somehow some way we've got to show the love of Christ and that's why I say pray for Wendy Williams and her strength pray for her healing pray for her mind and I pray mostly though that she get to know the Lord before she take her last breath that is my prayer that she really gets to know God in this time where she can now be quiet I'm sitting and you know, turn on the So Walter Jones show or turn on her favorite preacher, <laughs> teacher, evangelist, get the real word in her and let it marinate all through her so that she could then start walking up in the, the righteous way. God, I thank you for these people who are here. Here we are. We love you for what you're doing in our lives. Thank you for today's lesson. We celebrate women all over the country, if not all over the world. We thank you for they, what they've done for this here platform, the So Walter Jones Show. Women have been such a great positive impact on us. They prayed, they've interceded. They have sent their hard-earned monies. They've sent letters to the P.O. Box. They've blessed my children and my grandchildren, the women. And 70, over 70% of my viewers are women. And I thank God that we don't spite the hand that feed us. <laughs> that we will continue to rebuke and correct and, and all these other things. But I plan to do more encouraging, to strengthen them so that the women know their roles in the kingdom. So that they can continue to grow in grace and nurture in the admonition of the Lord because their children is watching them and other women are watching them and even though the sisterhood might be broke it's not broken every home so help these women out God give them strength protect them as they on the streets from harm and danger and any hurt and pain that may have come upon them God erase that from their memories so that they can continue to go on and produce and be spiritual rosy riveters <laughs> We love you, God. And we definitely give your name to praise in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen and amen. All right, y'all. Take care of yourselves. Happy Women's History Month. I, I was trying to do uh, a show on it, and this is my first time finally doing something this month, and I'll continue until the end of the month. All right? I'm going to stop, but I'll play that role. i see y'all later, okay? Go to patreon.com, the So Walter Jones Show. I want to play a song, uh, uh, some ditties. Um, Carmen died today. Eric Carmen was one of my favorite. I, I had his tape too. Eric Carmen's tape was a part of that club. He died yesterday. I want to do a little ditty. I got to go to church tonight. <clears throat> so if I get home on time, I might bring out the keyboard and play a rendition of All By Myself. Not just the radio version. I want to play the rock Mononov version. <laughs> Pray my strength. <laughs> Thank you.
Fellas, does it seem like you can't get a good woman? Ladies, wonder why you can't keep a man? Then read The Four Women That Men Desire, Volume 1, by Sir Walter Jones to figure out how to break the cycle. Go to Amazon.com to get your copy today.